Hey, look, I got a Zima board. These things have been really crazy online. They did like a billion percent of their Kickstarter. That's over the top. But while we're at the marketing stuff, they also say it's the world's first single board hackable computer or something like the world's first hackable single board server. That's what it is. So that's the marketing. I'm not sure if that's true or not. I'm not going to verify that. That's just what they say. I don't know how I would verify that, but I'm sure a lot of people have been hacking a lot of things. But this is cool. I'll tell you that much. This is you learning. That's what this is. So in this video, I'm gonna talk a lot about tinkering and learning. And this is an amazing device just from that standpoint. This is x86. It's not ARM and it's like the size of a lot of the little ARM tinker boards and all that, but it's x86, meaning a whole world is open to you. You can install plenty of different NAS software on here. You can install OpenSense and OpenWRT on here. You can install basically any version of Linux that you like, and you can even install Windows on here and FreeBSD. I guess I kind of already said FreeBSD when I said OpenSense, which is the better version of PFSense. You haven't been following that. And this is an amazing device specifically for OpenSense and PFSense. Well, open sense let's let's not use pf sense and that's because we have two gigabit ethernet right here on the front is this the front or the back which side is which okay this is the cool thing right here let's just get to it pci express the world is open to you i mean it's a little bit weird if you're putting in a giant graphics card like this graphics card right here some of you may recognize this i brought it back for nostalgia purposes now i want to know is the graphics card plugged into the zima board or is the zima board plugged into the graphics card i want you to tell me right now also on the end here we have SATA ports. We've got two of those, and in the middle there, that's SATA power. And it comes with an adapter for one SATA device. Why did this not come in the box? It cost $390. It already came with one that does one SATA, you know, because the power thing in the middle, the little plug in the middle, that's power. Why not include this? It's $390. You had to include one, which might have cost, what does that cost, $1.90? Charge me an extra dollar for the, for the unit and then give me this one. This would have been amazing in the box. I needed one of these before I could even do the video because I have an HDMI capture device. So this is just mini display port to HDMI. Regular old HDMI. Oh, that special edition board. Look at that green color. Okay, I need to stop looking at that. Finish going over all the specs because I'm kind of all over the place, but that's the way this video is going to go. You got your mini display port right there. We've got two USB 3, uh, and then we also have the power adapter, six watts of power. That's it. So that's the other big thing about this. While it's not going to be um, like melting your face fast, it's six watts of power. Now we have three different varieties of this that all feature the Intel Celeron processors, their Apollo Lake. All right, so we have three different models here. So let's just cover what we got. The first model is the N3350 CPU, two cores, boost up to 2.4. I think the base is 1.1, and that's got two megabytes of cache. These all have two megabytes of L2 cache. That one comes with two gigabytes of memory, and that's gonna be just fine for like PFSense or something like that. You just need two gigs and two cores. So if you're running OpenSense, PFSense, you can save a little money and get that one. It's got 32 gigabytes of onboard storage as well. Uh, they all have 32 gigabytes of onboard storage. Then when you move up, you move up to the N3450, and that's got four cores. Again, boosts up to 2.2 gigahertz, not 2.4, but 2.2 gigahertz. And then we have two models with that same CPU. One's got four gigabytes of memory, and the other one's got eight gigabytes of memory. Now the PCI Express on this, PCI Express 2.0 by four. The mini display port is DisplayPort 1.2, which will do 4K at 60 hertz. And the other thing that's nice about this is it's, you know, passively cooled. This all, this whole thing right here in the back, that's just a big heat sink. It got a little bit warm, but it's completely quiet. And, you know, with the lower frequencies and stuff, I'm not too worried about anything else. We got the Intel VTD, VTX, AES, and I, so that'll be great for hardware pass-through and stuff. It does support 4K video transcoding, they say. Support H.264, H.265, MPEG-2, and VC-1. The dimensions are 138.7 by 81.4 by 34.9 millimeters. That's pretty much everything going around. What are you going to do with this? That's the question. When you compare it to stuff that's about the same speed, well, you can find things that are faster. In fact, you can even find like some old computers that'll be faster like old i5s and old i7s you can probably pick up for one to two hundred dollars but the thing is those are going to be a few hundred watts or over a hundred watts at least six watts and this tiny form factor and it's quiet and it's got a lot of those are not going to have this you're going to have to buy an extra add-in card if you want extra ethernet ports so that's another thing to consider this does have the usb3 and there are plenty of 2.5 gigabit ethernet to usb3 adapters out there so over on the shop.zimaboard.com we have all kinds of just extra accessories I'm going through all products right here i'm just going to scroll through and just see some of the ideas that we have here now it doesn't come in any kind of fancy case so you can get little cases and brackets and whatever for it also want to note that when you mount a pci express 
thing on the end. Well, usually the PCI Express bracket is too long, so I had to bend mine a little bit. It's not that big of a deal. You can bend them or you can remove them, but I like to bend them and have them there. It's whatever. So right here we have uh, PCI Express. This is 3.0 by 16. It's a dual NVMe. Now, again, this is going to run it at PCI Express 2 speed, which I think gives you a gigabit or so of, I forget what the actual is, but you're not going to be able to run these at PCI Express 3.0 speed, even though this is PCI Express 3.0. We've got 10 gig Ethernet adapter. That'll work just fine on there. 10 gig Ethernet adapter. That's a good idea. And then two port Ethernet adapter if you need some more ports. Just all kinds of different ideas that you can install right there. And remember, this is not about hardware compatibility. It's about the software compatibility because this is x86. So if you install, I mean, Windows, even an old version of Windows, well, you could put a graphics card in here. Install maybe a version of Linux you want to install, get an AMD graphics card and get it going. So there's, look at this, four port, 2.5 gigabit ethernet right there. So you could run a 2.5 gigabit ethernet switch and have software installed. I mean, you could run that in a container if you wanted to. All kinds of expandability options right here. So there we go. I've given you some other ideas of things that you could do with this. You can install an emulation operating system on this. Uh, my favorite is Batacera, and you can get an x86 version of Batacera to run on here. Look that up if you're not familiar with it. It's a very easy to use. It'll basically turn this into a little arcade machine with all the old consoles, and this should run a little bit better than a Raspberry Pi, especially if you were to plug in a graphics card, because if you do that, and sky's the limit, but it might take a little bit of advanced knowledge to install the right graphics card, the right drivers on Linux, and then get that up and running with your emulation software, but it's doable. I mean, everything's doable. Other operating systems you could install on this, Proxmox. It's x86, uh, and we've got, you know, four cores. They're not extremely powerful cores, but Proxmox does not use that much. You could install several different VMs, and those cores can burst up to 2.2 whenever they need to burst up to that or 2.4 if you get the the first version the thing that's also nice is if you get the version that has eight gigabytes well then you can install several different vms uh, and, you know if you're doing like linux vms or whatever some of those only need one gigabyte two gigabytes and you can just allocate it that way and you can also over over provision things so if there ever is a bottleneck or whatever if there's ever like too much stuff going on Proxmox can ha can handle it it can say like all right we're gonna put all this stuff in queue and then it goes here 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 and then that's how it all works so even though this only has quad core you can make several different vms and have eight different cpus provisioned for all the different vms that's fine the only thing i'm going to say is that you could probably get similar performance for less money. You can't get it in a sleek package like this. In getting it with the uh, PCI Express, maybe, you know? I mean, it just depends on what you get. There's ways to, to get into this stuff, uh, but not at this size. It's just, this package is really, really what's hard to beat. It's got so many things like already here and trying to reproduce that by putting together old pieces of hardware and stuff. I've got an old Dell, like an old, like from an office or whatever. It's got an i5, it'll run OpenSense just fine, but I'd rather put it on this. So that's where I am with this. All right, let's take a look at Casa OS. This comes pre-installed, it's based on Debian. So when you first get in here, there's, I guess that you're already logged in. They didn't ask me for a username and password or whatever. Activities, what a quaint little start button. Now Casa OS, right now it's just like a basic installation of Debian. This is the Debian desktop. We are not in Casa OS at the moment. So how do we get to Casa OS? Well, we'll have to click on this. It's just a web interface. So we don't really need Debian, I guess the desktop environment, if we're only gonna be using Casa OS. OS. So I would probably reinstall this without the desktop environment and then just go with Casa OS, but that's cool. So I'm going to go ahead and set up a user account and everything here. And now this is our Casa OS desktop. So what is Casa OS? It's a container management software. So it's similar to Portainer, but I'd say it's like the easy mode version of Portainer. And I really like that because there's a lot of different apps that you can install here and all these are gonna run on your network. So this is basically your entire home network. You can get that up and running. So when you first start it up, you'll notice that there are a few hits like Jelly Fins here and some other Home Assistant. There's Pi Hole here, but you know what? I think we can do better. We got transmission if you wanna do some torrents. I think we can do better. So what the, f the rest of it? All right, there we go. We're gonna do an update and see what we got. Change a few of the settings. All right, now we're on the latest version. Ah, get over there. All right, everything's up to date. Update, good, good, good. All right, now let's look at the file store and see what we got here in the app store. And that's what I'm looking for. This more apps button over here is beautiful. If you click on the question mark, it'll open up a browser and go to a list of all kinds of different apps. Now we can copy these and put them in here. I'll install some in just a second, I promise. But let's let's grab a few lists here. Cool store. Yes, hope it's cool. Now we got 262 apps. Let's just get all the apps. Now, some of these apps are not maintained by Casa OS. They're publicly available lists maintained by 
nice people like the Big Bear App Store over here. If you've seen any of their videos, I guess that's who it is. So I'll go ahead and install that one as well because it has some stuff I want. Now let's say that we want to run our own little wiki on our home server or our own blog. Well, we can do all those things. Let this thing update. There we go. Let's do a wiki. We've got all these different wikis that we can run. Let's try WordPress. WordPress, how about that? Let's let's install this. Why not? All right, it's installing. We can let it continue in the background, but I'm just going to let it go ahead and install. WordPress is installed. Let's see what happens when we click on it. It should bring me to the installation page. There we go. And we can set up our WordPress blog. Let's do it. So this is not quite as snappy as it would be on like a ridiculously fast machine, but that's fine. Now, normally when you're looking through all your lists, you do have Pi-hole, but if you add the Big Bear OS, you have Pi-hole and Unbound. Now, Unbound is really cool because it essentially makes you your own DNS server so you're not reliant on anybody else. Here's all the information we need. We don't need to worry about too much of this. Uh, we could change the port to something else, but uh, let's, I'll leave it at 8080 for now, but you can change all these ports. There we go. Here's all the information we have. All right, this is essentially a Docker Compose file. Oh, WordPress is probably already 8080. Let's make it 8085. Why not? All right, now Pi-hole's installed, so check this out. We go over to Pi-hole, and the first time you're there, it's like password, but you don't have a password. When you do the normal install, you'll have a password, but just do this first. Just mess it up. Oh, you don't have a password? Forgot your password? Well, you can change it. This is the code that you need to change it, and all you do to, to fix that is go back over to your Casa OS right here, and then see the little dot, 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 click on that, click on settings. And this works for all of the different uh, things you have installed. And up here, that little logo, that's the terminal. Shift insert will paste, not control V. Press enter and ask for a new password. I'm going to leave it blank. Why not? There we go. Password removed. Are right, you ready for this? Now we could just come back up here again, get rid of the login because I removed the password. And now we are in Pi-hole. It was that simple. Looks like there's already some updates available, but Pi-hole is up to the latest version. But yeah, right here it is. Now you can start blocking different lists. And I want to check out the settings down here. And we go over to DNS or Open DNS or any of that stuff. You're using your own DNS that was installed at the same time. Because remember, we didn't just install Pi-hole. We installed Pi-hole and Unbound at the same time. This is the easiest installation of Pi-hole and Unbound I've ever seen and now it just works now you can just tell your other computers that this is your dns right here it's really easy so i think that this is um a pretty cool operating system especially if you're someone who's just getting into this stuff you know i'm installing more stuff right now ghost is a a blogging platform similar to WordPress. I'm just installing that too, installing a bunch of stuff. This is a great platform for someone who is learning about all this stuff. I mean, it's a great platform for even someone like me who just wants to easily install Pi-hole and leave it alone and let it do its thing or easily install a whole bunch of different containers. Now, like I said, it's not quite as nerdy as Portainer. The end result is the main thing that I care about. And that's that's what this is giving me. It's giving me the end result I want, which is getting a whole bunch of apps running in my own home network. Let this go in the background. I'm going to look for like a couple more things that are good for home. How about an RSS reader? Because we're all stuck on social media and that's garbage these days. RSS is still around and it's still probably the best way to get your news instead of being force fed sensational headlines. Oh, look at that. We got fresh RSS, RSS hub. We got all kinds of stuff. So we're going to do fresh RSS. Why not? And I'll show you what that looks like. So this is my installation of fresh RSS. And I just, you know, if I haven't subscribed to as many things as I want to yet, I need to subscribe to some more grognardy type stuff and some more techies type stuff. But I've gone through and subscribed to a whole bunch of different video game channels. And I can just browse through all those. Go back to my mainstream here. All kinds of interesting articles. And this will update all the time. Star the ones you you want to keep. And, you know, after you've read them, they check mark is red, so pretty handy. And you can install that on here just fine. All right, we've got Nginx, but that's going to be the difficult way to do it. Let's install Nginx Proxy Manager. Yeah, make sure you know what you're doing. Oh, good grief, it's going to occupy port 80. So before we do this, we're going to have to go and change the, the CASA ports. So we'll leave this alone for another time, but you can do that. All right, I'm shutting her down. This is a, just a quick overview of CASA OS. To give you an idea of some of the stuff you can do, we'll take one last scroll through here and just look at a lot of the different packages that are available so you can start to think of things that you could do with this OS on your home. And just to note, a lot of this stuff is available in Portainer but I'm finding this much, much easier to work with than Portainer. If you want to do backups and stuff like that, it's probably easier to back up the entire system. Um, you can do some Docker backups, but it's not built in. So that's a thing as well. If you're really worried about that, I would just use this for learning, tinkering, and I mean, if you know how to do backups of Linux stuff, then by all means, there's a lot of stuff here and you can just add more and more. And you know what? If something you really, really need is not here, there's another thing you can do. You can come up here and do a custom install. And this is going to be, again, similar to working with like a Docker Compose YAML file or whatever. Probably over a lot of people's heads. 
but cool, whatever. Anyway, and you know, I like the fact that when we're not using this, close tabs. When we're not using this, we just have, we've got Debian right here. We can just use this. This is probably Firefox 12. So we could just pop it open. We can install stuff on here. We could start, you know, maybe install RetroArch or something and have a nice little emulation machine because this is plenty fast enough to play all the old stuff. Probably is faster, faster than a Raspberry Pi. So, so that's pretty much all I want to cover with this right now. I don't want to get into too many other things because it'll turn into huge tutorials. I wanted to cover the operating system that it comes with, but I'm not going to put on, you know, 10 different operating systems and try it with 50 different things because I don't think that's a reasonable use of my time. I think a lot of times you can look at this, see what it is, get an idea for something that you could do with it you know tell me in the comments what that is because i'm curious what would you do with this i'm very very curious all right so that's that the zima board i love the form factor the size and the different options that they've crammed into this tiny silent computer that's x86 it feels good to have that much power right here with the x86 and it only uses six watts so it's cool there's a lot of fun that can be had with this. And remember, tinkering is extremely important. I'll end with this little statement on tinkering. I might make an entire video talking about this. A lot of people who tinker are ridiculed and made fun of. People are like, what are you doing in there? Why are you messing with this? What are you doing with that stuff? But you know what? When it comes time to fix something, when it comes time to change something, when it comes you know, to something that someone needs and they don't know how to do it, the people who know how to do it are the mad scientists and the tinkerers because they've tried lots of things. And part of the process is trying and messing up and failing and scratching your head and going back and then learning and creating. And, and this is a board that will facilitate all of that beautifully. So let me know if you want a whole video on me talking about the just the, I guess, the benefits of tinkering and how I think it's really important that we have tinkerers. And I think there's a lot of them out there in this audience. So hi, everybody. Keep tinkering. Don't let anybody look at you and say like, what are you doing? That's fine. They, they don't have to understand because whenever they need something, you'll be there to fix it for them or to help them or to guide them or to share your knowledge with them. Let them just veg and watch Netflix or whatever they do. I don't know. What do, what do regular people do who are not tinkering all day? What do regular non-mad scientist people do? All right. So to go out, I'm going to give everybody 20% off all the stuff I have on my shelves. The coupon code will be mad scientist. And that'll include everything in the store that I have on our shelves. It excludes the stuff that's print on demand, which are only a couple items. So pretty much everything, 20% off coupon code mad scientist. So head over to epicpants.com and take advantage of that. See you in the comments.